Hello everybody out there, how are you guys doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel and let's talk about the elephant in the room. As you can see, I am clearly back in the sling of things. And of course, it's a very comical and also extremely painful situation. I discussed a little bit of what happened in my last video, so if you want the updates on that, go ahead and watch that video regarding Pikmin 4. I don't want to spend any more time, just wanted to quickly address it. Yes, my arm is injured, I'm seeing the doctor again on Monday. So for this video, yeah, you're going to see me in a sling. It is what it is. But as far as the actual topic at hand today, what I'm doing is probably no surprise, and it's discussing all of this crazy, messy discussion that's been going down the last two days regarding Bobby Kotick, Microsoft, the FTC, and these discussions and back-and-forth quotes that went out about the next-gen Nintendo console. So here's the thing. Let me address the second elephant in the room when it comes to this. We're obviously talking about these quotes that came from Bobby Kotick, that were some email exchanges between him and with Activision Blizzard and Shintaro Furukawa with Nintendo discussing discussing things around Call of Duty and the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo platforms and the future and all of this stuff. Now, this went absolutely haywire initially because there were a couple of outlets reporting this as Bobby Kotick, who's by the way, just like the worst, creepiest dude in the industry. I hate the guy, let me just get my opinion out right here and now. He is a freaking ghoul of a human and should not be in charge of any video game company, in my personal opinion. But, he is in charge of one of the biggest companies in the industry, he's part of this story, so we're gonna continue to talk about this whole thing around him, but I just wanted to say that that guy sucks. But the reason this went haywire initially, and, and some outlets misreported this, is because he vaguely hinted at the power of the next Nintendo console, potentially being in the range of the base level PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and that had people all over the place, mostly people taking it at face value and saying that it was disappointing and not enough power for the next-gen Switch. And then other people saying that the outlets reporting this as Bobby Kotick saying he had the actual knowledge were wrong and didn't do proper reporting. And they were able to kind of look back at the quotes and realize that he didn't say he actually knew specifically the specs. He even called out that he was waiting for more finalized spec info. So the conclusion that he was saying it's for sure PS4 and Xbox One level ended up not really being true. And so that was a whole mess and everyone was mad at the outlets for jumping the gun and misreporting stuff. And, and it's dumb and it shouldn't have happened that way for sure. However, the discussions around whatever the power of the next Nintendo Switch will be is not actually what's most interesting or exciting to me. To me... It's actually the fact that he talked about the next-gen Switch at all. Obviously, I have a vested interest as a game fan, and of course as a Nintendo fan, in what the power of the Switch 2 or next-gen console will actually be, because I've been very excited about the prospect of a next Nintendo console for a couple of years. And I am still excited, and I will continue to talk about it whenever it's interesting to me, just so you guys know. I think it's a very fascinating topic, and at this point, most of the internet and other YouTubers are realizing there is a lot of meat to this conversation around a Switch 2. It's a very interesting and exciting time. It is only a good thing. It's not negative. No one's talking bad about the current Switch when we just get excited about the idea of a Switch 2. So, some people out there in the internet, some game fans that are a little bit too emotionally tied to the Switch, maybe need to hear that stuff, so hopefully it helps you under to understand that I and other YouTubers who talk about this stuff just find it exciting and interesting, and so that's why this conversation's happening. And so yes, the power of the Switch 2 will be very interesting at face value, if it turns out to be only as powerful as a PS4 and an Xbox One, I don't know. I'll have to really kind of consider it at the time that we would know that for sure or not. I can tell you that it's not the ideal power level I would want a Switch 2 to be. However, I think Nintendo could actually do some pretty fantastic things with that power level. But at the same time, in theory, the current Switch is actually kind of in that range anyway, right? I mean, there are PS4 and Xbox One, like, 8th gen games that run and are playable on the Switch. Yes, they don't look as good or run in 60 frames per second, but they're possible and playable. And so, 
anyway, that's a conversation for another day. We can't even go on the PS4 and Xbox One level set as, as a real conversation point. Anyway, again, I want to get back to the fact that someone in Bobby Kotick's position, and again, as much as that guy sucks as a human, he is a very high up president and CEO of one of the biggest and most successful companies in the industry, in charge of some of the biggest franchises around, like Call of Duty, like Overwatch, like Diablo, like World of Warcraft. Sadly, he's a big deal player in the industry and he's in the position to even have these email exchanges back and forth with someone like Furukawa at Nintendo. And the fact that he was discussing more details or at least wanting and waiting for more finalized details on the Nintendo Switch 2 is fascinating because that to me tells me that the industry and huge powerful players like Activision Blizzard are aware of and preparing for the next Switch. Now, because of the whole mess around this conversation and outlets jumping the gun and reporting some information too quickly, uh, a lot of these outlets, in fact, I think all of them have pulled their prior articles. So I've tried to find the articles that I read the other day that showed the quotes of what the email said. And by the way, just quick reminder, this all came out because of Microsoft and the FTC trying to buy Activision Blizzard. And like I tweeted about, this whole situation is getting so messy that it is basically proving to be this insane expose of all the skeletons in the closet of the entire video game industry not just microsoft not just activision nintendo and sony and so many other companies are having the skeletons in their closet revealed because communications have to be you know deposed and, and presented in this court filing and so that's why an email between activision and nintendo is being brought up in a case between Microsoft and the FTC. It is insane how it's all playing out and it's why this is even a conversation. And so regrettably, I couldn't find any of the articles that actually had the quotes of these emails between Nintendo and, and Bobby Kotick. Uh, the only thing I can still find up is the original uh, tweet from Benji Sales that I quote tweeted that says, just revealed Bobby Kotick and Nintendo have had active talks about the next generation Nintendo console. Also says that apparently next gen Nintendo console is close to eighth gen power. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And so again, for me, the power level part of this tweet and this conversation is not the interesting thing to me. Everyone else cared about that. I didn't care about it. It's the first sentence that was very exciting to me. Bobby Kotick and Nintendo have had active talks about the next generation Nintendo console. And to my knowledge, again, I'm, I'm struggling to read through all the information, so I don't want to misquote anything be aware that I might be getting this wrong, okay? But I'm pretty sure that these are emails that happened in the last, you know, couple of years. So this isn't emails between Activision and Nintendo from like last week. This is like 2020 or 2021 communications, I believe. And if that is actually true, and if you guys can find more concrete evidence and discuss that below, of course, please. But if that's true, like I think it is, then that means a year, two years ago, Big companies like Activision and Blizzard were already talking to Nintendo and probably receiving dev kits for the next Nintendo console. And so this brings me back to the exciting part of this, which is I see this to be much more interesting evidence that the entire video game industry at large is aware of Nintendo's next console. They're talking about games. They're probably development, developing games. I'm sure dev kits are out there. I'm sure Activision Blizzard has dev kits. I mean, as far as I can tell, that's probably what this is saying based on when these communications might have happened. And so this is as close to confirmation without actually being confirmation as we can get about the Switch 2 being actively worked on, discussed, shared with the industry, and games probably being prepared for it right now. Now, to be fair to the conversation and the details here, does this confirm concrete details or a concrete window on when the Switch 2 will be revealed and then also subsequently released? No. But does it give us a semi-decent look and maybe even a broad window into when we can expect it? I think so, yeah. I mean, the fact that we're finding out that in the last couple of years, big companies were having these conversations and preparing for Switch 2 stuff tells me that it's probably closer to being revealed and released than not, right? The ongoing conversation and, you know, information and comments I've been fielding for a couple of years on my conversations is that there are folks out there who believe 
that the Switch 2 is not going to be revealed and released until like 2027, which is four years from now. To me, that is an impossibility, and I just can't honestly humor that kind of thought because I just think that's too far off. Could it be farther off than I've been predicting? Absolutely. I mean, I might be wrong in my thoughts that we're going to see it this year or next year. Well, I think we're going to see it this year, but I think it's probably going to release next year. Um, I could be wrong in that, but even if I'm wrong and it's farther away than being revealed this year, it sure as hell ain't going to take until 2027. There is no way, which is why... I find these conversations and this information between Bobby Kotick and Furukawa to be fascinating and very enlightening and eye-opening because it just means to me that in the next year or two, even if it proves my, my predictions wrong, that in the next year or two, this thing is going to be coming out. And so predictions aside, I can't wait to see what this leads to, you know? Part of the reason the conversations between Bobby and Nintendo were even happening specifically points to Call of Duty. There's a lot of discussion and a lot of information coming out right now, literally like actively as we speak even, about Activision and Bobby acknowledging that they missed the boat on the Switch, they misjudged and mischaracterized it when they saw it in dev kit form way before it was ever revealed and released. They thought it wasn't going to be a huge hit. And in some ways you could kind of forgive them for that because as much as it breaks my heart to always admit, the Wii U, which I love to death, was not a hit. And seeing what Nintendo was doing before it released and became a big hit with the Switch, I could see why maybe some people weren't quite ready to jump on board and maybe didn't believe that Nintendo was going to have the huge hit that the Switch turned out to be. And so a, a franchise like Call of Duty, I could see why they chose to not release it on the Switch initially. And so they're acknowledging that that was their mistake. They misjudged the Switch. They, they would love to have gone back in time. I'm paraphrasing a lot of quotes that are coming out right now, so you can find the stuff out there if you look for it. They, they are regretting the fact that they didn't decide to put Call of Duty on the Switch earlier. Now, what's really stupid to me is by the end of the first or second year of the Switch, it was obvious the thing was doing gangbuster sales and breaking records. So they should, of course, correct it at some point in the Switch's life when it comes to Call of Duty. And it is so mind-boggling and bafflingly stupid that they never did, especially the fact that they're willing to acknowledge it right here and now, or even two or three years ago when these communications were happening. It's like if you already knew that you made a mistake missing it at launch, that's fine. We, you can be forgiven for making a mistake at first, but you've had several years since to realize that there was an opportunity to take advantage of the success of the Switch and its popularity and the install base. But you never did. You never damn did. So why the hell have you been sitting on your laurels this whole time, you stupid idiots? And so ultimately, at the end of the day, that stuff doesn't even matter because it's no longer about the past. It's no longer about the current Switch. All eyes are slowly starting to turn towards the future. Everyone's being prepared for and again, excited for a Switch 2 or a next gen Nintendo console, hoping to see it in the next six to 18 months and big companies big franchises like activision and call of duty and whatnot they've been talking to nintendo about it they've been aware about it for a while this does confirm that okay and now it's it's just a matter of when are we going to see it and what's going to happen next you know again the discussion about power it is an interesting one and it is a valid one to have because yes part of the reason i and other people get excited about a new nintendo console is to see a healthy, significant power jump and improve the performance and visuals of games releasing on Nintendo's platform. I'm not a power junkie and I'm not a graphics whore, okay? But do I still appreciate competent power and really good, impressive graphics? Absolutely. I mean, I've been playing games and enjoying generation switches for 40 years, so it's always exciting. And so, yes, I would like to demand a little bit more out of my next Nintendo console, whatever it turns out to be. So... PS4, Xbox One Power, the jury's out. It became messy. Everyone misreported it. Bobby Kotick did not specifically say that he knows the specs and that it's definitively PS4 and Xbox One. He alluded to it being in that range, but there's not enough concrete details to go on. So that was all just speculation that people jumped on too quickly. When that stuff comes out, which we, we will eventually know whenever it becomes time for Nintendo and other outlets to report the facts on the power of the next console, whether it's this year, whether it's next year, whether it's 2025. Again, I'm willing to acknowledge the windows of time that will prove my predictions wrong. Whenever that stuff happens, we will then discuss it. I will have many, many thoughts. I had thoughts on the PS4 and Xbox One talk too for like the two hours 
that it was out there before everyone called them out, and then that stuff got redacted. So it's a very interesting situation. Like I said, very messy, but more important than the power, we've got big players like Activision confirming the existence of the Switch 2, you know, Switch 2, which I'm calling it. Very exciting time. Can't wait to see what happens. Tell me what you guys think about this, and uh, I'll see you on another video in the future.